need like a Capri Sun. Nope. I need to talk about these transfer portal. <laughs> this is worse players. almost. Colin, I need to Actually, talk it's about not them. worse. Because yesterday I, I had said, I go, oh, I guess we're a basketball school now. And then we go ahead and lose to Boise State. So still a basketball school. Still a basketball school. Still a basketball still school. A basketball I don't school. care. Name don't off care. these transfers, Bruni. All right. I have a whole list in front of me right now. Let's yeah. let's do it. I got it. We've already well. talked about Jamori Macklin. All right, we talked about yeah. it. I think we did a good job re- re- recapping that. Uh, go check out our last podcast. I think we also did a good job um, in the big picture. I tweeted out a couple of clips um, we talked about, and um, I think that's very much indicative of where I stand today in the big picture in terms of, you know, you have to figure it out, yada, yada, yada. But all right, since Jamoy Macklin, the first domino fell, mm-hmm. here are all the players that have entered the portal since. Iowa Day, running back. Ethan Miner, offensive line, starting center. Uh, Stone Earl, backup quarterback. Logan Wilson, starting safety. Isaiah Johnson, backup running back. Damian Smallwood, a backup lineman. Robert Johnson, backup DB. Howard Sampson, starting tackle. Travian Brown, start, uh, backup receiver. Babechi and Wawu, starting offensive lineman. Dorian Morris, backup receiver. And Chandler Rogers, starting quarterback. That is six starting offensive players now in the portal with Macklin a day minor um Rogers Nawawu and Sampson yeah and then Casey Mareka has entered the draft so seven um stars on offense now gone from the team without exhausting their eligibility so where do we want to start where do we want to start just... First of all, I want to start because on last podcast, I didn't think that it was going to get this bad. I was like, oh, and you were you were a lot more grim than I was. I was like, oh, you know, this is just kind of the way it is. It'll be all right. And here we are. And now I'm reeling because you lose the players that made this team so good on offense. I mean, Chandler Rogers obviously is, is the main one there. But a day I know I said last podcast that, you know, you lose him. You still got Oscar and you still got Isaiah Johnson. Well, Isaiah Johnson's leaving and. A day going only really uh, is okay if you keep Rodgers, if we're being honest. Um, you have more insight on this. Why do you think – I and I could be wrong here. North Texas specifically seems to have a lot of transfers on the way out. Do you think that this is, this is mi- a mix between – players trying to, you know, go somewhere where they can star more, whereas that's Chandler Rogers or Jamari Macklin, and also players going, okay, I tried a year with Eric Morris. Let's go be yeah. somewhere else because I was recruited by Seth Luttrell. I I think in a normal year, normal cycle, after like a first-year coach has the year, after a first-year coach, you know, has a year with these players that he didn't recruit and whatnot, I think – this many players entering the portal would not have been a cons- uh, a uh, uh, would not have caught me off guard. Mm-hmm. But in this situation where you had a top twenty offense in the country, I can't say it's because of Eric Morris. Okay, I can't say it's because of Eric. Morris. If these were defensive transfers, which you know Logan Wilson was, sure, uh, you know there's there's a couple Robert Johnson, yeah, yeah. that would make sense. But this. The, these players are leaving from a top 20 offense. And if you look at their offer list, Ethan Miner is going to go play, probably potentially start at, at a very big school. He's getting like crazy offers right now. He's rated a 91 in the transfer portal right now by on three. Yeah, I see that. Um, <laughs> like, I think that might be higher than Rodgers. Yeah, Rodgers is at a 90. 90. Yeah. yeah. So pe- they love Miner. Um, and then uh, I, I liked howard sampson who was a freshman or retro freshman who started games for for north texas this year and if fabechi nuawu i believe had offers from like oklahoma and stuff now he's tweeting out so these are players that are like getting legitimate offers and i think they're just good players and they're gonna go like i don't know if eric morris had anything to do with it um at this point so um that's my thought on that um same thing with the day. We'll see where he ends up. I don't know what offers he has. Let's see if there's – I haven't even seen anything from him. But I, I just think it's – they're going to P5 schools now. That's it. I think that's it. Like, I, I don't know. I, I Macklin, 
Rod, like again, the last time I do want to clarify, like last time I was throwing out like just crazy numbers off the top of my head, you know, just money and I stuff. Do it. It wasn't those numbers were not accurate. Like first of all, I do want to clarify that I was just throwing them off the top of my head, which I think I said, but like you did say, I'm just just throwing stuff off the top of my head based on what we've heard and what we've uh, you know t- just the national like media has talked about. Um, that's the case. I think, you know, Macklin will be get paid. Rogers will get paid. And I honestly, minor and Fabecci, if they go to good schools in a day, if they go to good schools, they'll, they'll make some money. They're not going to make a ton, but they'll make, yeah. uh, those l- latter guys will, will make some more than anything though. They are going to have the opportunity to like start at those schools. Now I will be disappointed in that, in them and like their situation. If they go to a school and they are backups, that's the biggest I don't want to say concern, but that's something that I'm worried about. Like for them is will a day go to a school? Let's say he goes to Texas tech or something and he's the second running back and he ends the year with a hundred carries for 460 yards. Yeah. Like then it's like, all right, what are, what are we doing? And not even a hundred carries. Sorry. hundred is actually a pretty good amount, but like, let's say it's 60 carries for 400 yards. Yeah. Then it's like, all right, was it worth it? Well, Jair Short is back in the portal right now. Yeah. Because it didn't work out at Auburn. Like that, this is legitimately, and the thing is, is players have a graduate transfer year now. And I know, I think they used his, I don't know. Macklin obviously used his graduate transfer. Rogers Rogers as well. his, his, yeah. So they can't leave. This is an all in type of proposition here where if I'm then this, this is my advice to them. Go somewhere where you're going to be the starter. Yeah. Do not go somewhere where you do not know what you're getting. Do not go somewhere where they say, hey, you know, you're going to have to compete with this guy that we recruited that, you know, he's not great, but, you know, maybe he, you know, develops all this stuff. They have recruited that player and they have vested interest in him. They've developed him. They know exactly what they're getting from him. You, on the other hand, they've seen your tape. They know what you're capable of, but they haven't practiced with you. Like they might not be the good, the perfect coach for you. Right. And that's a big thing here is go somewhere where you are going to start and go somewhere you are going to play. That's the same thing with Rogers too. I think Rogers knows this. I think he, I don't think he's going to go anywhere where he's could lose the job, but like I heard from coaches, like I, I heard through the grapevine, like there are coaches in the P five that absolutely love Rogers. Yeah. Okay. That's great. But not all like some P five places have, players in line that they are going to start a quarterback or that could start a quarterback for them. Rogers should not go somewhere where he it's 50, 50. He shouldn't be. I don't know if you saw what Spencer Sanders at Ole Miss, he mm-hmm. went to Ole Miss and after starting for four years at Oklahoma state and it was a backup all year. Yeah. Like don't, don't put yourself in that situation. Go somewhere. You're going to start, go somewhere. You're going to play because the whole point of having a quote unquote bigger stage is to show what you can do. And if you cannot start and play a majority of the snaps, then what are we doing here? Then yeah. What are we doing here? Besides, yeah. I guess if, if they do pay you, you take the money, but like other than that, it's, you're just missing out. I do think it, I do think we should be fair in a certain sense, like with a day, for example, like I think for him, it makes sense to transfer or at least feel it out just because it's like, okay, I've done so much. I'm going to bet on myself again. We'll do the ground. I have no thing. problem with a day. transferring. Yeah. Um, honestly, I don't have a problem with any like, players actually transferring as long as they put themselves in a position right yeah problem problem is a bad word for it i guess it, it's it's more like is the grass really greener the problem the, the only problem is i think from north texas perspective and like and this goes back to what we talked about last podcast as far as the g5 schools in general getting gutted um there are quarterbacks across the country in the g5 that are yeah. gone. Just yeah. I, I don't have a list in front of me, but it is extensive the amount of G5 teams that have lost their quarterback if the quarterback was any good this year. And so I don't even look, look at this as a North Texas problem. I mean, we we see Jared Mosley on Twitter like tweeting at people talking about the problem that, that they're facing right now. I don't think there's really much North Texas could have done in this situation. And I don't think there's much like the players in this situation are doing wrong either. I think the overall situation – is just bad. Right. That's the why I wouldn't. What was that? The environment that that's being created. Yeah. All of this is the problem from the NCA. Like the, I I was optimistic about the transfer portal benefiting. I think 
you know, G5 schools to a degree. And I think with that, with I, I was wrong in that regard. I think I saw a stat that the top 10 teams in the preseason AP poll ended the year like 128 and two in the in games they were favored by like 10 or more. So the gap is widening. Like there aren't these upsets of a bad team or not even a bad team, but like a UTSA, Tennessee, right? Tennessee ran UTSA out the building. Yeah. That shouldn't really be happening. You shouldn't have this 30 point gap where every time a team plays, SEC team plays a good G5 team, there's a 30-point gap. Like, it has created a massive, massive um, spread between the top-end teams and the, honestly, everybody else. Like, I would say everybody outside of the top 20, you are fighting, and that includes P5 teams. Like, you are just fighting for relevance. You're trying, You're fighting to stay close. That's what... Teams like I think Baylor, you know, have struggled with Houston. Uh, struggle has struggled with that jump up. Yeah, like, I I do think it's a legitimate problem the NCAA has. But in terms of North Texas, I think it's just an unfortunate situation. Like I can't. There's nothing here. If these players go on and start at Texas Tech, like I said, like if they start at Big Twelve schools, if they're starting at ACC schools, they're starting at like high level programs. I do not have a problem with the moves at all. Yeah. No, the question I agree. Comes is, you know, is it, is it going to work out? And that's a risk that everybody takes when they enter the portal. We, we don't know that. So uh, let's flip this and look at it from North Tech's perspective. Now moving forward, Eric Morris now loses, you know, at least seven of his 11 starters on offense. Uh, he'll have to replace the quarterback position completely. completely. Yeah. Because Earl is gone as well. Um, does he go transfer portal? I would assume so. He has to. Um, I think a key is what I would do, and I think this is – there's a lot of quarterbacks you could take, you know, maybe. I wouldn't take a drop down, I don't think. I would take somebody who's proven things. I look at Bailey Zappi, and I know that might be a crazy example because that guy was awesome and is in awesome NFL. in the NFL. <laughs> yeah. But he was at Houston Christian at the time. I think it was Houston Baptist. Houston Baptist putting up numbers on numbers, went to Western Kentucky, put up numbers on numbers for two years, gets drafted. Yep. Like I want a guy, even I don't care if it's FCS, I don't care if it's a low FBS. I want a guy who has at least proven it somewhat that he can play. I don't want Chandler Rogers. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. exactly. Exactly. I don't want Jace Reuter out of there. I don't want Amani Gilmore. Like I don't want those players that are drop downs from other schools because I feel like to me most of the time that doesn't really work out. Right. So I, I would prefer, like you said, Chandler Rogers, Bailey Zappi, and that maybe that's being optimistic. I don't know, but I want a player that has proven it at the FCS level or proven it at a low FBS level uh, that he can play and that he can, you know, fit into what an air raid system is and throw the ball around. Just has the arm talent that you need. So. That's what I would look for if I was Eric Morris. Yeah, and and it's gonna. I think it's gonna be harder and harder to find players like that. Like as teams still have their talent and they haven't been poached from bigger schools, eventually that, that in my eyes that talent pool is gonna run out. I don't know. You have you to don't think so. Look, this has become a food chain. Well, that's what I mean. Eventually, I feel like the bottom of the food chain will eventually run out. Will it? I How? feel like it has to. No. How? How? School recruits player player leaves whereas like these lower schools uh i don't want to use ulm as an example but any of the lower schools we can use north texas as an example you still have talent that you're developing whereas if you're just getting it posted there's no time for development at that school you know what i'm saying so you don't build that base of players that are that are good they're just all right we'll, we'll go now like like for example north texas right away like you're losing ethan minor yeah but like Howard Sampson and Fabechi, they're good. Yeah. But they're not great. Logan Wilson, he's good, but he's not great. So you're 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 degrading your 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 mean, I feel like over time at these for these lower schools. And and like you already kind of said it, you're the top 20 schools are already winning. Well, I don't know what the stat you threw out was, but two losses out of a hundred and something, yeah, right, against against good G5 schools. 
And I feel like that'll eventually just happen with lower level schools. And then it starts to dry up for those schools. I think I'm following you, but I, and I, I, maybe you're making good points. Everybody listening. I'm trying to think because like, I think there'll always be players that like step up in the the lower range. Sure. There'll always be players, but I feel like the, the, the average talent level will drop. Sure. Over time. Okay. Yeah. So, so like you look at this North Texas team now, if, if things stay the same way and you're still recruiting players from those lower FBS schools, at what point do you just become the talent level of that lower FBS school while you're getting all your talent, real talent? I see what you're saying. Poached away to higher schools. Yeah. Eventually, it's just going to degrade the product. No, I agree. Eyes. No, in I mean, eyes. yes. And that's where you take transfers to, to supplement. I think quarterback is the only one. It might be one of the only ones where I'm like, all right, I don't mind. Like quarterback position is where I need someone that has proof of concept. All yeah. the positions, I think I'm okay if you take a drop down, wherever. And honestly, it sucks, but I think Eric Morris's hand has absolutely been forced to just take 20 players in the portal. Like well, I, it, thought, I think we both thought it was forced before all this happened. No, well, but it was forced defensively. Defensively, they needed yeah. transfers. Yeah. Offensively, if they had kept any of these players, <laughs> then I think they would have been in position to maybe be a little bit more selective. But now you're not you can't be selective anymore. You just can't. Yeah. Like it, it sucks. You don't need running backs. You have Ragsdale and uh Attaway still at this moment. But you need tight ends, you need offensive linemen now, you need receivers now, you need a quarterback, and um it just yeah, it just sucks. They're gonna have to like I I've never been big on high school recruiting, and sure high school recruiting matters, like you're gonna get them, but like this has just completely drained me in, ter- in terms of like from a North Texas, from G5, from really 90% of the schools in the country. Like you get a player, develop them for two years, they're gone. Yeah. Like it is absolutely, um, like I said, it's draining. It just really, really puts a cap on anything you can do. Like, would Jalen Guyton and Mason Fine, Jeffrey Wilson, would those guys have been gone? You probably, yeah, right. Like probably Jeff Wilson puts up the years that he was having. He probably is at an SEC school. Like that's just it's completely changed the paradigm. It's can change changed everything. The ceiling, everything. It doesn't matter how well you coach at this point because. There is so much work to do, and you're at such a disadvantage now. That's another thing is coaches have to reteach everything every single year because they have new teams, whereas in the – I think a lot of programs don't have that problem at the P5 level. Yeah. And, you know, you could say, oh, well, not all G5 teams are losing talent like this. Sure, that might be true, but um, they're also – Tulane lost its head coach, like – um, now the player that UTSA was able to keep is is gone at quarterback. Um, I I still think the turnover at the G five level is just too high to overcome right now. So yeah, and and honestly, if I can be frank, like S, uh, UTSA had a good year. Um, their best player, the outside linebacker, is gone. Yeah, and North Texas had a top twenty offense this year. Very few G five teams, if if any, could match North Texas. So, yeah, they're going to lose all those players because they're all damn good players that were uh, yeah. better than anything UTSA had on offense. They were better than what Tulane had on offense. Like, this was a great offense, and that's why those players are leaving. So, yeah, sure, you can mitigate how many players leave, but when you put up a top 20 unit on either side of the ball, players are going to Yeah, gonna UTSA leave. loses their best outside pass rusher. Like, Tulane... You know, almost Michael Pratt wise, I know he's gone this year, but like they would have lost guys like that. So and now you lose your head coach. So the turnover is just uh, too significant. Yeah. All right. That's all we got. Or that's all I got. That's all I got. I'm I just, mean, we just got to shave my head now. Right. 